Hello folks, C.W. Johnson Jr. here. I ask you to forgive the back noise that I have right now. There's the Highway 171 right out there and my back window is not rolling up all the way like it should. Um, I just want to say recently some uh, books I've been reading or have read about the American Civil War, War Between the States, or Northern Aggression, War for Southern Independence, War the Rebellion, what late unpleasantness, which if we don't learn from it, we might repeat it. We don't want to do that. That I've been reading recently about how it took place in Louisiana and the overlooked part of that war, of that period, in the state, great state of Louisiana. So here's some books I've been reading about it. The Battle of Calcasieu Pass, the Great Naval Raid on Lake Charles, Louisiana, by Michael D. Michael Dan Jones, from him, is self-published, and it looks at a little battle down in southwestern Louisiana, extreme southwestern Louisiana, Lake Charles area, that took place down there. I think it's Cameron Paris or Calcasieu Paris, Cameron Paris, I think it is, um, about this naval raid that happened in May 1864. Uh, about the same time that the Red River campaign was occurring and the Confederates won it. It was very strange and unusual battle because you had Confederate cavalry and infantry versus the Union Navy and the infantry and cavalry captured some ships from the Union Navy. And there, unfortunately there's no um, marker, historical markers down there or any park down there marking where this battle took place. Hopefully though this book will bring attention to these overlooked incident battle skirmish during the American Civil War in Louisiana, southwest Louisiana and a historical marker or even a park will go up there. Now this is actually an important battle that gets overlooked a lot during um, books on the war between the states. It is the Battle of Baton Rouge by Thomas H. Ritchie from I believe it is bookworm, bookworm.com publishing. You know like me. A bookworm. Anyway, it's the battle that took place in Baton Rouge, the capital of Louisiana, Red Stick, uh, the uh, only place in Louisiana where we have large hills worth talking about. <laughs> like people say there's no hills in Louisiana, but we say they're all down in uh, Baton Rouge. Pun intended. Anyway, so it's about a battle that took place in August 1862 in uh, Baton Rouge. Uh, Confederates attacked the Union encampment there. It was um, Breckenridge versus a Union general named Williams, who was killed during the battle, and both sides claimed victory, and both sides abandoned the field afterwards. The um, Union army retreated down to New Orleans, and the Confederate army retreated down up, up the river to Port Hudson, and were able to fortify Port Hudson, and by some time, to fortify that position on the river, and Port Hudson was actually the last Confederate bastion on the Mississippi to fall, not Vicksburg, it was Port Hudson. And after Vicks, after Port Hudson fell, the river, the, um, the Mississippi River then, the quote, I believe it was Grant or Lincoln, uh, flowed unvexed to the sea. So this is actually a very important battle that gets looked over. There's not really anything in Baton Rouge to mark where this battle took place other than a graveyard. Definitely needs to be more historical markers down there about this battle and a reenactment. Definitely a movie needs to be made about this one. Another one I've been reading about. I could see maybe Oliver Stone making a movie about this guy. When the Devil went Came Down the Dixie, Ben Butler in New Orleans by Chester G. Harding from Louisiana State University Press. Now, Butler was a very interesting guy they named him Spoons. He was a Democratic Democrat politician and he was very corrupt. He was a trial he was a lawyer, a defense lawyer for criminals. So he learned to be a real sweet willy when it came to things like that. And he did a lot of things in raids people down in Louisiana, including passing an ordinance an audience declaring the women of New Orleans who did not respect Union officers be nothing more than prostitutes. And Jefferson Davis actually put a death notice out for him, offering a reward for his death because they felt like that uh, ordinance was a free pass to sexually assault southern women. He did other things like hanging a man just because he tore down a flag. And him, him and his brother were the essence of crony capitalism. In fact, they spent more time uh, making money and enraging people with their politics and their crony capitalism than actually fighting the Confederates and 
doing anything worthy towards the war effort. So Ben Butler, Spoons Butler, Beast Butler, whatever you want to call him. Interesting character, corrupt character, would make a great Oliver Stone movie. Then I read, and while we're down there in New Orleans, here's another book, The Mutiny at Fort Jackson, The Untold Story of the Fall of New Orleans by Michael D. Pearson from... This book has been published in the University of North Carolina Press. Anyway, sorry for the glare there. This book is about the important but over often overlooked battles of uh, Fort St. Philip and Fort Jackson. They are supposed to guard New Orleans, but unfortunately that did not happen. The Union Navy just ran right on past them and captured New Orleans. And then there was a mutiny inside Fort Jackson that pretty much convinced the Confederate commanders there to surrender. So it's often an overlooked aspect of the battle, and while uh, he doesn't really go that deep into the actual battle, but uh, Pearson does do, do does do an interesting job, kind of pandemic, um, didactic at times, about um, the social issues in the Confederacy and how a lot of people in New Orleans, New Orleans was the largest city industrial s center in the Confederacy, and it really surprises me, hindsight's 100%. I'm really surprised the South didn't do more to guard that city because it was an industrial city. But there are a lot of Northerners, a lot of immigrants there, a lot of wage workers, and he goes into the social issues of how immigrants and wage workers were treated back then, and how the social issues resulted in this mutiny. Because these people did not see the Confederacy fighting for them because they didn't own slaves. And they, they thought, you know, it was, just, it was a rich man's fight. Rich man's war, poor man's fight. So it's a very interesting book about the social issues in south of, southeastern Louisiana, New Orleans. And it's an aspect of that war that often gets overlooked. Another interesting book about social issues during the American War between the states and Louisiana is No Pardon to Ask, No Apology to Make. The Journal of William Henry King, Gray's 28th Louisiana Infantry Regiment, edited by Gary D. Joyner, Marilyn S. Joyner, and Clifton D. Carden. Uh, it's from, I believe it's from, where's it from? University of Tennessee Press, Knoxville. This is a journal about a regular um, officer in the Confederate Army. He actually never went into any battles, but he describes a lot of the um, infrastructure of Confederate Louisiana and the social issues. And he was captured at one point, and he, talk, he talks about some pretty interesting things like um, the fortifications, the efforts to make the river impassable for the Union Navy. He talks about one time in Shreveport, the um, body servants of a lot of the Confederate officers went to market and the Confederate Army tried to impress them all into working on the fortifications and these Confederate officers said, no, those are our, sl those are our slaves, those are our body servants, you can't do that. So he offers a lot of insight onto um, the mindset, social issues that were going on during that time in Louisiana. Now for a rollicking good book, Rip Roaring Adventure, check out Dark and Bloody Ground, The Battle of Manfield and the Forgotten Civil War in Louisiana by Thomas Aries from, what's it from? All right, published by Tyler Publishing. It's interesting because it deals a lot with Richard Taylor, Taylor Publishing, it's, it does it deals a lot with Richard Taylor, son of Zachary Taylor, and he is an overrated, underrated, overlooked um, Confederate general. He fought under Jackson and Shenandoah, and then he came back to defend his uh, native Louisiana. Um, it's a great book for definitely good old Southern boys to read. He goes into a lot of the issues about how the war wasn't over slavery, and he goes into a lot of battles that get overlooked during the study of the, of the American Civil War, and he follows, he writes like a novel, he follows several characters, such as Richard Taylor, throughout this um, occurrence, throughout this time period in Louisiana. So it's a rip rocking good book, reads like a novel, very exciting, very easy to read. I do regret he did not make, did not include, include footnotes in here so I could do more research on some of the things he talks about. Now, this is a academic book, uh, but it's also very dark and gritty. It is Yankee Autumn and it. Anaconda, a narrative of the Great Texas Overland Expedition through southwestern Louisiana, October, December 1863, by David E. Edmonds from. Where's it from? The 
Arcadian Press. Arcadian Press, as an Arcadian. And he goes into um, this over this over underlooked. Um, I'm sweating. It's really hot in here. <laughs> uh, campaign South Western Louisiana, South Central Louisiana, and about there on the Union Army was trying to invade Texas, and that did not happen for several reasons: encompassing the Union officers, Confederate resistance, and that's a very dark and gritty book. And um, one thing that recent years there's been a lot of focus on. Um, Rape on slave, on slavery and rape, and it seems like every movie that comes out since Twelve Years a Slave has to do with uh, slavery, has something about rape in it. And he goes into a lot. He goes into, and I'm not denying that happened. It's terrible. No excuse for it. But um, Edmund talks about how a lot of slavery women, once they're free, were raped by Union soldiers, and um, these are Union documents and diaries and reports that are, rec that are recording this. Some of the Union generals um, made the slave women sleep with them and um, openly. There was open gang rape by slaves, by Union soldiers, and a lot of the women had to become prostitutes to survive because the infrastructure was um, destroyed. And uh, so and they were called AIDS delights by the Union soldiers. And I shudder to, shudder to think how many uh, freed slave women had to endure sexual harassment by Union soldiers who claimed. Um, they owed the soldiers something because they had supposedly freed them. And it's kind of like a western, because there's a lot of cavalry battles, and a lot of Texans fighting down there. Um, Southwest Louisiana was a lot like the wild frontier, because you had the Arcadians, the Cajuns, and the Creoles, and the Anglo-Saxons, the Irish, they're all, you had a lot of gangs down there, Vizuantic communities. So he goes into that, and um, it's a very dark period. There's a lot of um, atrocities against committed against southern civilians, and there was one incident in which the soldiers, Union soldiers, got frustrated and they fired into a group of civilians leaving a church and they killed an unarmed old man. So it's very sad, sad book, sobering book, very interesting book. And not, not, last but not least, great series I've been reading recently. I actually reread it this year. It's, um, this book is a series by Donald S. Fraser from Texas. Yeah. All right. State House Press, um, Fire on the Cane Field, Federal Invasion of Louisiana, Texas, January 1861, uh, Jan January 1863, Thunder Across the Swamp, The Fight for the Lower Mississippi, February 1863, May 1863, and Put on the Bayou, Vicksburg, Port Hudson, and the Trans-Mississippi. These are a very fascinating series of books. Um, he definitely, Fraser definitely does a a a lot of deep research into this and he said to rely on a lot of issues that get overlooked um, during the that period of Louisiana and he period of history in Louisiana and he um, focuses on how lower Louisiana pay, played a big part in the campaign for the Mississippi um, there was actually a battle of Fort Butler Port Hudson uh, Taylor tried to cap capture um, New Orleans, so if there had been a lot more troops in South Confederate troops in South Louisiana, the Mississippi River might have uh, been in Confederate control for a lot longer. And it gets overlooked um, because in a lot of the atrocities committed by both sides during the war. And one thing that was interesting in reading this series of books when um, Keon West made his controversial statement about slavery being a choice, we had about you know 70 percent, 80 percent of the slaves ran off with the Union Army. Once they came, when the Union Army came through and supposedly liberated them, which Fraser makes it obvious and clear that at the, clear that the beginning of the war, that was not the aim of the Union soldiers. But you did have that 10, 20% of that did remain on the plantation with their masters or who volunteered to go with um, the, the plantation owners to Texas as refugees for a variety of reasons, Mo mostly because they're old or too young to take care of themselves. They need to be fed, they need clothing, they need shelter. And uh, are they were good friends with the uh, master? They were on good terms, or simply they went ran off to join the Union soldiers, and they found out they could be just as harsh and just as racist as the South. And this book is very icon icon uh, iconoclastic series by Fraser. Um, he de he debunks both the Lost Cause cause mythology and the social justice warrior mythology of the war. He goes into about how. 
a lot of the slaves, tens of thousands of slaves died of starvation exposure um, because the infrastructure of this plantation system had been destroyed overnight and there was no uh, way to feed and clothe and provide shelter for all the former slaves. So tens of thousands died and he, he uses union documents, union reports, union letters to talk about how the, the um, slaves are not ready for freedom yet. And one Union soldier actually says that many of them are discovering that freedom is freedom to die, which was a phrase used very interesting. I thought it was interesting because it was used during the debate over Obamacare, that freedom from government health care was freedom to die. So anyone who thinks that the lines are clear and drawn during the war between the states needs to preach a series of books about, yes, the South um, succeeded to protect slavery. No, the Union Army did not invade to destroy it, but they eventually did. Um, they can be just as harsh as the plantation system because often forcing the African Americans into um, the Union Army, they separated families just like slavery did. And there's an ironic part in which um, the Union Army abandoned tens of thousands of African American slave, former slaves, and they're dying of starvation and they're dying of exposure and disease. And an ironic twist, the Confederates came along and saved them. They saved them because they were. They, they thought they were property, but they saved them nevertheless. And he and it's royal. He shows that you cannot judge that period of history by the day's standards. It shows you cannot put a 21st mindset on the 20th, on the 19th century. And he goes into a lot of. And if you're from Texas, you'll like this series because he does a lot with the uh, Texas residents in South Louisiana. And there's a lot of rip roaring scenes. He goes really in depth. Shows us how much violence and destruction and battles that were in southwest southeast Louisiana and southwest west of Louisiana at the time. And I'm definitely looking forward to his next two books about the Overland Texas campaign and the Red River campaign. So for now those are some books about the um, war between the states and Louisiana that I recommend. Go check them out. Go buy them. Definitely support uh, Donald S. Fraser because I think he has a great series here and definitely needs more attention. Thank you. All have a great day. God bless.